Nowadays, it seems like there is an app for just about everything. And one of the questions we get all the time is, does my church really need a church app? Well, the answer might surprise you. We break it all down in today's episode. We hope this conversation will help your church reach more people and grow. This is the Reach Right Podcast. Well, hey guys, welcome to the Reach Right Podcast, episode number 83. I am your host, Thomas Costello, and with me, as always, is my co-host. Ian Hyatt. What's up, Thomas? Hey, Ian, not too much, man. Excited to have this chat here today. I think it's an important conversation we're going to be having because yeah. I know you hear this question quite a bit, but the, yeah. the title of today's episode is Why Your Church Does Not Need a Church App. Uh, yeah. So we don't mean to be too controversial on this, no. uh, but uh, there are some churches probably that could use a church app, but the vast majority of our audience, I believe a church app is probably not something that they need, nor should they invest in or something that they should do. Um, right. You hear this quite a bit, right? You hear people uh, oh. talking about really feeling like they have this deep need to have an app or tell me yeah. about that. Absolutely. Uh, probably still hear it quite a bit now, but boy, when church apps first came out, they were, it was more of a rage then, but yeah, absolutely. Still, I hear it on a weekly basis. Um, yeah. You know, probably, you know, I, the word app comes up uh, probably in every other conversation of mine. Yeah. So, yeah. I would think so. What, what is the, like, uh, I suspect that a lot of people feel like they need a church app. Right. But like they haven't really thought through what a church app is actually going to do for them. And we'll talk some about that. But do right. you think I'm right? Is there like, do they like, is, is it just because that's what everybody else is doing is why they feel like they need a church app? Or what are some I, of the reasons you hear why people need them? I think it's that. I think it's they, they just, they, yeah, because everyone else is doing it. We've been told we need an app these days because uh, right. if we, and, and I think it's also, they feel like because every church is trying to reach the next generation, right? Churches are aging all across America. Right. And uh, they feel like because, you know, the younger generation is, they're on their iPhones or smartphones using apps daily that, oh, therefore we better have an app if we're going right. to reach these people. Yeah, I think that's a big reason. And, uh, and that's just, there's been a buzz about them because I think they were one of the, they still are probably one of the more recent technology technologies that have come out for churches. So, yeah. yeah, I think what it is too, is that a lot of the very large churches, like, mm -hmm. um, you know, like past mega churches, right. like the giga churches, the really big yeah. ones, your, uh, Steve, Stephen Furtick's at Elevation right. Church, your lifechurch.tvs, they all have apps, right? And, yeah. and f I think in those circumstances, an app probably makes sense. But we know that the lion's share of our audience is not a 5,000 right. plus member church. Uh, right. I think that's probably about where the threshold is. Even a larger church of, of 2,000 people, I think yeah. an app probably doesn't make sense for some reasons that we're going to get into today. Yeah. Uh, but I would say that it makes a lot of sense. And I think people see that, you know, well, they have it there and they get a lot of momentum on their app and they have uh, tens of thousands of downloads on it. Right. So maybe we should be doing this here too. I think they have a very unique use case and situation that most of the churches in the, in America and really across the world, they don't have that situation there. So for yeah. that reason, I think it makes sense for some larger churches, but for the vast majority of us, uh, probably not, I would say. So why don't right. you kick us off though with the first reason today, Ian, about why we think most churches don't need a church app. Yeah, I'm excited to kick this one off because this is what I, I explained to many churches uh, because a lot of churches feel like apps are like an outreach tool and uh, and they're really not. Uh, they're inward focused. That's our first right. point here is that uh, apps are inward focused. And, and that, that might sound negative, but they're, they're an internal tool. So right. when, you know, someone is looking for what we all need to be focused on first and foremost as pastors and ministry leaders is reaching newer visitors, people that are don't have a church home. And what those people are not doing, they're not going, oh my goodness, you know, I'm considering going to uh, check out Grace Bible Church. I better get their app here before I show up on a Sunday. They're right, not doing course. that. They're not doing yeah. that. What they're doing is they're Googling churches near me and they're usually ending up at the church's website. If, if they catch wind on social media, uh, they'll check them out a little there. They'll still go to the church's website. They're not saying, yeah, I'm going to download this app. That's, I mm -hmm. mean, and if you think about the apps that you use, you already were bought into something, whether or not it's Facebook, whether or not it's ESPN's app, 
Uh, yeah. You already, when you, when I get an app, it's something that I already know I want to be a part of or do uh, or look at continually. And that's why they're inward focused. And, uh, and also because what they do, and you can kind of dig into some of those details, they, they how they're an inward focused tool, right? Yeah. I mean, I think if I think about the way that I, um, I think about my phone, um, I am really reluctant to add any new apps because I already have yeah. like, I don't know, probably I haven't counted, but probably yeah. 60 or so apps on my phone. I have to scroll through pages and pages of apps. Yeah. How many of them do I actually use uh, in an average, let's say month? I'd say I probably use maybe 10, maybe 15 of them in a yeah. given month, different yeah. apps. And then I have all these things that I downloaded once I have things like a, I have a Scrabble scorecard keeper on my phone because one time three years ago, I played Scrabble uh, <laughs> with my family and I figured, Hey, that would be a fun way to do it is let's yeah. just keep track of it on there. And then I have one for another game we played called Quirkle. Uh, so if you play Quirkle, let us know in the comments. It's a pretty fun yeah. game for families with, <laughs> you ever played Quirkle before Ian? I haven't. I've heard of it. You though. haven't. Well, get ready to live. It's uh, all right. Maybe <laughs> oh I'll check goodness. it out. Anyway, I'll get that app and then I'll install it. it if I don't like it. So yeah, you can. <laughs> but I have so many different apps on my phone. And so I, yeah. I kind of, I don't know if I have like this app guilt or something that I, I'm not going to download something and have to uninstall it and all the work yeah. that goes with it. And here's the thing is that, like you said, nobody, because of that, nobody is downloading your app before they visit your church. It's almost like a, a, a level of commitment. We should put yeah. that in like our, our church assimilation process is that right. they, they, uh, they give and they serve and they have downloaded our app or you know, whatever <laughs> that would be. It's almost that kind That's of funny. level uh, if you right. do those kinds of things. So I think if your goal is to reach more people, and that really should be the goal, I think most churches have a front door problem and not a back door problem, getting right. more people in uh, to the fold and kind of bringing them into the family, that is the challenge. An app won't do much for that. It could yeah. be a tool for some of the people that are there, but there's some other reasons why we don't think that's really the case. But yeah, right. I, I think they're primarily inwardly focused. Again, yep. you were saying there's nothing wrong with that. I think people, right. you need to have some focus on people that are a part of your church. Nothing of wrong with that. But if your goal is to reach people outside of your church, an app will do, uh, unless for a very specific kind of very large church, it'll yeah. do very little for you. Right. Exactly. Awesome. Next one up. It's uh, apps that are billed as custom. They rarely are custom. Mm. Uh, oftentimes we're told uh, that um, you can get a custom church app, but really that is not what what's being offered in most cases. We know this yeah. industry pretty well. A truly custom church app, the ones that you get on to get Elevation Churches app or Life Churches app, right. both of those places have full-time dedicated staff that have worked with people that are, they're keeping the app up to date. They've probably outside contracted work for this. We're talking on those, that scale, hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah, have gone into yeah. the development of your app. If you're a church yeah. of 300 people or 50 people, or even 1500 people, you probably yeah. don't have a lot of business spending hundreds of thousands of dollars building a, a church app. Um, it right. probably isn't the best way to spend your money on those kinds of things there. Uh, yeah. So we think that it's probably, uh, it, it's probably, it's almost certainly not custom. If you're telling being told you can get a new church app for only, um, oh, I don't know, for only a thousand dollars, or it's only $150 a month. It almost right. certainly is not a custom church app in that kind yeah. of a case. So um, we think it's really something that we should, you should know before you jump into that right. hold, that you're probably not getting something custom there. And boy, is that word thrown around uh, quite loosely, custom, you know, with everything uh, in, in technology and just in, in, in general, you know, even car, we customize, you know, customize your car, whatever it is, that word, you know, it's so broad. And I think that, you know, uh, in, in maybe in a, a pastor's mind or someone who's getting an app, you know, they think it's custom just because they can kind of colorize it to uh, uh, their church's colors or put their logo on it. Right. Or, and that might be a little bit of customization, but it's not yep. truly, truly custom. Right. No, so. totally different. Yeah. Right. So beware when you're told you're getting a custom app because uh, unless you're spending, I'd say at a minimum $20,000 going yeah. through the, like just for instance, just getting approved by the app store in Apple and Google play store. That yeah. is a huge process that takes a ton of work for churches to navigate and it'll cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. So anything yeah. sub $20,000 in setup, it's almost certainly not a custom church app. That's good. That's good. Well, I'll yeah. hit the next one. And that's that church apps are usually additional platforms. So 
Uh, and what we mean by that is, I think, well, I'll take a step back. Every church I talk to, they really would like to uh, minimize, minimize rather, uh, you know, how many different things they're doing with technology as possible. Yeah. So this is one thing to consider. You're really getting an additional platform or uh, think of it as an additional whole new setup with something. Um, and so, you know, it is a going to be a place where you're going to have to have an additional platform for sermons and events and and uh, do a little bit of double duty there, if you will. So, um, so that is one thing to bear in mind too when you're considering an app, right? Yeah, I think so. I think really, um, if you think about it, like you're saying, really, what an app is, if you're um, with most of these app companies out there, and we don't want to speak poorly of them. I think yeah. that they're really doing their best to advance the purpose of the kingdom. They do serve a purpose for a few churches. I think I just wouldn't recommend it to most churches. Uh, but yeah. the, what most of these companies do, the way it works is you go in and you download their app. So you download the church app company's app. Uh, and then you tell your members of your church, hey, go and find the search for the church app company or whatever it is, whatever app company you're working with, yeah. you ask them to go find their software and then they download that. That's what's installed on their phone. It'll say right. the name of the company, uh, right. whether that be, well, there's tons of them out there, right. but it would say the name of the company and then they would go in and they would find their church uh, or your church in that, in that list on that particular church app company's app. Yeah. So really what they're doing is they're just, they have found your channel, if you will, on a broader church app. It really isn't all that different from what people are already doing on Facebook. You know, they go onto the Facebook app and then they'll yep. find your church's page on that right. app. And then they can do whatever, they can listen to messages and yep. they can find events and all those things that they want to do on there. So in essence, it really is just another platform that people will have to download and add. And I would say in most cases, your church website, Facebook, uh, to some extent, YouTube, Instagram, they're already doing all of the things yeah. that the app would already do. So right. it really, to me, doesn't make a lot of sense to go that route um, just because it really is another platform that people have to download when they already have things that do the right. same thing on their phone. Right. That's exactly it. No, I don't have any much to add there. I think we hit it all. Yep. That's it. Next one up is that church apps are expensive. It's a big investment to do a church app. And that's not even talking about the big custom approach yet. Yeah, right. Obviously, most of our audience isn't ready to fork over $300,000 and, and do a huge custom church app on those things. Yeah. Uh, but even if you're doing one of these pre-made ones, there's a couple of different pricing models out there. Both of them have some kind of cost. One is you're going to pay between you know, $75 and $300 on doing an app where your church would be one of the ones you could select from yeah. the thousands of churches that have also purchased that app software. They're right. basically another platform for your church there. So there's that cost. You'll spend, I don't know, a, a lot of churches, that's a, to some, it may not matter that much, you know, what is sure. $150, but to a lot of churches, that's a big difference. $150 is you could do a yeah. lot with that. And if right. you don't have to pay it, that would be better. So yeah. alternatively, some do a model that is more like uh, tied to your, uh, a lot of them are online giving companies. Actually, I'd say most apps now uh, have yeah. an online giving component because I think that's an right. important part of any app, yeah. um, which makes sense. But what they do is while they may not charge you a large fee for the app itself, you're kind of tied into their online giving platform. And right. some of those are more expensive. The standard nonprofit rate is going to be somewhere between two and two and a half percent. And maybe they're charging 2.7 to 3% on their transactions. So you're paying for it kind of on the back end by yeah. higher fees when it comes to the apps on things there. So in the end, you're always going to pay for your church app and they tend to be so expensive and you probably have yeah. a lot of that functionality there already. Yeah, that's good. I think that's a good yeah. point uh, with your ending on that, just that, that it, you already have a lot of that in place. So uh, good. Well, I'll get the next one. And that is that uh, church apps aren't the best way to do push notifications. Um, so that's been a big thing in recent uh, years. I, I know I hear that about, you know, uh, can we do push notifications when churches talk to, to me about our services and everything? So uh, and maybe you have some good in insight on why and what why they're not the best. Why, why they're push notification, like right. why a church app isn't, 
Well, I, I don't even think it's not that they're not the best. I'm sure that it's that I, I haven't had a lot of experience with all of the church app companies out there using yeah. them. Or the best my... way to do it is what I meant specifically. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I just think that like, it's not the best way to, I think it's more just that there's other ways that are already free and you have them on there. Really a right. push notification. I, I, I think that just for our audience, that maybe you're not totally sure what that is. That's anytime you get a little thing that that pings you on your phone to yeah. let you know that something's going on. And so the most common push notification is a text message. Every time you get a text right. message, you get a little ping and it says, hey, who texted you? And a little yeah. snippet of what the message is. But we all get them probably from, unless you've turned them off from Facebook and yep. Instagram and Twitter and all the different channels that we use, right. you get a little push notification on there. So yeah. I would say that all of those platforms already have push notifications enabled. And so I think for most churches, rather than having someone go and download your app, it's easier to say, hey, go into our Facebook page and then click on that notify button so that yeah. every time we make an update on uh, of a new sermon that goes on to our Facebook page or uh, a new event is added on there that you'll get automatically notified, that comes up as a push notification. So it really is, yeah. people have to opt into those no matter what. Uh, and I just think that you already have, they, they have it on their phone. And honestly, um, here's one of the things that we have, we've seen is that not everybody is going to download your church app, even if you right. have a church app. I would yeah. say that most people still won't have your church. I app. haven't, I haven't downloaded ours. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, does your church have a, an app? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Is it their own app. app or is it a, is it a, it's their, it's, app? it's their own. It's they their own. It's, the a, big bucks. Yeah, you know, it's a big, you're the yeah, size it's, that does it. Yeah. yeah. Right. 8,000 plus member church. So, right. But, uh, so that, yeah, so that does make sense. Yeah. You don't have it on your phone and you're a, and I don't committed. A fully yeah. committed member I give um, on give online and and uh but uh yeah i just do it through our church's website because we have a very mobile geared website so yeah, so i think what pastors sometimes think is oh you know if i just can get an app then i can notify everybody in our church whenever we have a really important announcement we have to right. make or a reminder uh i still think you're going to reach more people with a, a notification on facebook yeah i think it, that because more people are going to have facebook than We'll have your app. I'd say the the minority of your church will have downloaded your app, so it will not do what you hope it did. And you right. already have tools to send out push notifications. I think a text message is probably the best way to do it. Yeah, a mass texting kind of platform for your church. Yeah. So more about that in another episode. Yeah, there you go. It's yeah. good. That's it. All right, I'll get the next one here. Uh, one of the problems with church apps is that they require double data entry in most cases. Uh, they notoriously do not play well with quality church websites, I will say. Now, most app companies offer a very basic church website that kind of as kind of a, a tag along that comes yeah. with the app. You can also get a church website. And so I would say that very few churches will be satisfied with a straight template website like those uh, typically are, and maybe they have some customization opposite options at different app companies out there. But most of the time, you're going to get a off the shelf pre-made church website that will not be a great tool for you to reach people with that kind of outward focus there. So yeah. if that's the case, and when you have just a pre-made website, then sometimes they're, they'll automatically pull information off of the website and put it onto your app. But for the lion's share of churches that are using a platform like Squarespace, like WordPress, our preference, uh, or any other kind yeah. of normal content management system out there, you're going to have to put your sermons on your website, on YouTube, on your app, onto Facebook. You'll have to be at one more place to put your sermons, one more place to create events, one yeah. more place to do all of the content updates that you want to do. And if uh, in my experience, churches are already mostly failing at that. We're right. always behind on getting content everywhere. And how often do we see the the last update on the events page or the blog was from nine months ago or something like that? Yeah. So you're already struggling with that. You don't need another place to put this content. So double data entry is a big problem with apps, I'd say. Yeah, that is. And, and you know, I talked to so many uh, pastors and ministry leaders, and and that comes up in every conversation is just you know, they're already their church admin or whoever it is that are, are making updates to the, whether or not it's their website or social media, they're already, like you said, overwhelmed. And yeah. the question I get is like, you know, 
do we have to do double duty on updating a church calendar? Our, our, you know, our secretary is already just behind on all of that. So that's a good yeah. point and something to strongly consider if you're considering an app is, you know, count the cost as far as the work it's going to take. So absolutely yeah, good. Yeah. All right, the next one, and that's that church apps are rarely used, you know, and there's a lot of data out there on this statistical data and everything, but it's funny uh, getting back to conversations I have, um, I, I, I talk to pastors and ministry leaders day in and day out all over the country. And whenever we have this discussion about apps, I do ask that question, you know, often of how are your members using your app a lot? Do you follow up on that? And uh, I usually hear not so much. Um, yeah. We have an app. I hear we have an app. Um, we have some members that use it and give through it a few, but, uh, but we're not using it the way uh, we should be using it or not using it enough. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really feel for church leaders, I think, cause I, I totally get the idea. Like I, it totally yeah. makes sense. And I, I, on paper, it seems like such a good idea that we have a one place on our phones yeah. where people can go and do this. I, I think that the, you know, your website also lives on your phone, right? Like, so yeah. teaching people to have a link directly to their website on their home screen yeah. where they can click on it and they can get onto your church website. I think that's something easy to get over yeah. that. But honestly, the idea is it, it's really hard to execute it as well as it seems like you're going to be able to when people yeah. are buying church apps. And we have seen so much buyer's remorse when it comes to that, uh, yeah. just because they put in all this money, they feel kind of tied to it. It's really yeah. hard to change platforms. Or once you've right. added something like this, it's hard to take it away because you hear those stories of the, you know, the 15% the of your church that does use it, they yeah. probably really like it. Uh, yeah. And to take that away or stop paying for it, it's going to kind of ruffle some feathers there. So the fact is, is that in general, they're not as they're not used as much as you would think they would be. And so yeah. I think for most churches, we want to try and save you that uh, that challenge there of of trying to start and stop and do those things. Right. And we think your money is probably better invested into building a better mobile experience on yeah. a website because again, right. that can do everything that a church app can do. So it really is probably plus your best it can bet. also be an outreach tool. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right. so, and so yeah, visitors yeah. will see too. That's right. So yeah, that's well honest and kind of with a, a question here today that's as we kind of wrap things up, those are the the different areas that we we kind of came up with as to why you don't need an app. But tell us what you think about your church. Yeah. Does your church have an app? Uh, we'd love to know in the comments or let us know or send us an angry email if you feel like we're totally off base on this here. But this is just kind of our experience. I really feel this is the way things are going. Um, yeah. I, I, it's kind of weird to say that knowing that there's apps are not done. We're not anti-app. I think yeah. apps are are still going to be used. I just right. think that the average local church, we're not in a world where that it makes sense for most of them right now. But please right. let us know in the comments below. Does your church use an app? Do you like your app? Uh, yeah. Do you feel like, I'd be really interested as kind of an informal survey, what percentage of your church has downloaded and then what percentage of your church regularly uses your church app there? We'd love to know in the comments. So yeah. thank you guys so much for being a part of the Reach Right family here. Uh, if this episode has been helpful, or if you feel like we've uh, earned a subscription, we'd love it if you would subscribe uh, and then let us know any other comments or feedback, any future shows you want to hear us or topics yeah. you want to hear us cover in future shows. Let us know that in the comments as well. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the Reach Right family, and we hope to catch you next week. See you.